Okay, well, today our story starts here in Florence, Italy. And I wanted to just show you a few pictures of Florence so you could get a sense or a feel of uh, the, the environment that I'm talking about. Today, uh, this is uh, Florence looking at it, but you can see how old the buildings are around here. And it would have had a very similar look at the time. Some of these buildings are actually from that time. Uh, this is the Cathedral of Florence, and this is their bell tower. This dome would not have been completed at the time we were talking about. This uh, would have just been wide open to all the elements um, as, as we're talking about this. They would completed up to this point. They just did not know how to finish that dome. So that would not have been there. Today is a super big landmark for Florence, but it would not have been there at the time. But this kind of gives you a sense of the city. Now, obviously, way out here in the suburbs would not have been here at the time. But this is the way it would have looked. Today, uh, these the, the buildings and the structures like this bridge are not here because they would have been just like this bridge, except for these were bombed during World War II. So those buildings were gone, these bridges were gone and they had to build new ones. But this was the only one that was left. And this would have been from the medieval times that uh, it's called the Ponte Vecchio. Ponte means bridge and it's over the Arno River. Um, and, it, and this is the way they built their bridges, where they had buildings on them, shops. And at the time of our story, this would have been full of like butcher shops. And it was a little stinky and people, you know, uh, a lot of commotion going down there. And so the rich people, the Medici family, lived on this side of the bridge. And so they had a walkway built up there so they didn't have to walk down here in all the midst of the commotion that was going down there. And then they just went over here and went to work. This is the way Florence kind of looks today. You meander around down in the streets of Florence, and it's really beautiful. It, it really just still feels like a medieval uh, town. This is a, a, a market in uh, Florence, and I always say, if you go to Florence, and you should, I highly recommend it, that that's something you put on your to-do list, uh, buy leather. Uh, it's it's known for its leather project products, so it's got bags, coats, purses, belts, stuff like that is all big um, in Florence. Of course, you'll want to sit down and eat outside in a beautiful restaurant, eating beautiful food, right? The Italians love food. And this is uh, the offices where the Medici family went to work when they crossed over the Ponte Vecchio and went to work. And it is absolutely stunningly beautiful. Today, it is known as the Uffizi Art Museum. It has some of the greatest art treasures of all time here. And Uffizi means in Italian offices. Uh, this is what it looks like on the inside when they went to work, right? It was pretty spectacular. And this would be a hallway you go into. And then there are galleries, you know, on either side full of beautiful artworks. Um, I highly recommend getting your tickets in advance or you're going to stand in something that looks a lot like this for three or four hours before you can get in. That brings us to uh, the heart of the city and the cathedral complex. The cathedral complex, uh, you know, most cities would have a cathedral complex and it would include the church. It would include the bell tower, right? This is the church or the cathedral. This is the bell tower, right? Back here, the dome is there. But of course, remember, it's not there during our time of our story. And then this is the baptistry. And it's the baptistry that brings us to our story today. So the baptistry is an, uh, um, octagonal building, and it had uh, it had three sets of doors on it. Here, there's one over here, and there's one here. Uh, the first set of doors on this side was uh, commissioned and completed in 1330. Uh, actually, completed in like 1336, but it was by um, an artist by the name of Andrea Pisano, and he created a set of doors. The, and you can see kind of like, I like to show you where it's set, but the doors that he created are right here. By the way, no car traffic is allowed in this area. This is completely foot traffic to walk between, but it's really not very far uh, between this building and this building. And this set of doors is the one that I want to talk about. 
and it, it looks like this. They're bronze, and uh, they were they're bronze cast, which is a very uh, difficult process to do. At the time they were doing it, they probably created uh, the this relief sculpture in wax, and then poured a, a model a mold over the top of that with some sort of maybe created it out of clay so it would harden and they could use it, um, and then they would. Uh, create a bronze cast off of uh, that. Now, oh, excuse me. So I want to show you just close up of what the these this original set of doors look like. Okay, so this is the baptism of the disciples by uh, St. John the Baptist. And then over here, you have the baptism of Christ by St. John the Baptist. So this, uh, this four-leafed, uh, four, yeah, I guess we'll call it a leaf, uh, uh, design is called a quatrefoil. Quattro in Italian is four. And it was very popular at the time to do designs in this quatrefoil uh, format. And I'm going to show you, like, if we look at the side, that gives you a little better sense of how it's a relief sculpture and it stands away from the wall. So those were the original, uh, the original doors. Now, they still had two sets of doors that weren't done, right? This set in this set. So keep in mind, these weren't done. They were just big wooden doors. And Florence wanted to become a hub of activity in the, you know, region. And they said, geez, we don't even have doors that are finished on our baptistry. How the heck are we going to be, you know, uh, you know, a, a power in this area, in the Tuscan area? So they put out a competition and they asked artists to submit ideas. I believe there were, I don't know, maybe 10 artists that uh, thought that they could possibly create bronze sets of doors. It's a pretty specialized field. Not just anybody could do this, right? And so they narrowed it down to two off of the designs that were submitted. And the two that they decided on was um, Lorenzo Ghiberti and Filippo Brunelleschi. You might remember Brunelleschi from the Duomo in architecture. Now, with that said, this is the set of doors that we're talking about. And they said, okay, here's what we want you to do. We want you two to go away for a year. They give them an entire year. Create a panel for us, a quatrefoil panel with the story of the sacrifice of Isaac. Okay. And so they, the two artists did that. They went off and they created two panels. And oh, by the way, I wanted to show you if you stepped into the baptistry, what it looks like. Okay. So they sent the two guys away. They said, go uh, uh, create these panels, come back. And they did. And these were the two submissions. Um, on the left, you're looking at Lorenzo Gaberti's submission of the sacrifice of Isaac. And then on the right, you're looking at Bruno Leschi's. So the story is, is that, you know, Abraham and Sarah uh, in the Old Testament were childless until Abraham was 100 years old. Sarah was 90 or 91. And miraculously, they had a baby, Isaac. And when Isaac was 12, God said to Abraham, uh, I need to know that you truly believe in me. And in order to do that, you are going to have to sacrifice Isaac. You know, well, you can imagine how tough this was, and we can go into this whole story, but, um, you know, you can think about that. But Isaac said, okay, I will do that. And he took uh, Isaac and placed him on an altar. And then he went to, uh, you know, stab him or slit his throat with a knife. And just as he was going to do that, an angel appears and says, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. Um, you proved your point here. We, we totally believe that of, of your faith in God. And so, no, you do not have to sacrifice Isaac. Uh, sacrifice a lamb instead. So with that said, uh, you can see that uh, there's just kind of two different looks. And these were the two submissions that the the uh, jury, the panel, had to decide upon. 
uh, Brunelleschi's, let's look at it first. You can see that Isaac is here. Um, he's kind of got a sense, of, a shallow sense of space. It seems rather flat and it feels as if things are rather attached to it. Um, but right as he come, right as he's just ready to slit Isaac's throat here, you can see the angel has to forcefully grab his arm, right? He has to pull him away and say, no, 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 no. You know, like he just got there in the nick of time. Uh, and so that, so he stops him from doing that. You can see the sheep that is going to be slaughtered, um, you know, sacrificed. And he gives us a little sense, like there's some foliage here, you know, there's a cloud up here, um, some rock maybe down here. There's the donkey that they rode up to with it. So, you know, he's giving us some sense of space here, but it's a little bit flatter. Um, over here on this side, you have Gabertes, right, where um, he has his arm pulled back. He has the knife in his arm and the angel is just getting there. See, the angel doesn't have to grab his arm. It didn't real, it, it didn't get that far. Um, he just was going to do it. And he, the angel's up there because no. So the angel doesn't have to actually grab his arm. It had not gotten to that point yet. And then over here, you have the sheep that's going to be sacrificed, but you have a little bit deeper sense of depth. You know, you get a sense that they had to go up into the hills, maybe into some rocky terrain. Here's the the donkey. Here's the two servants on this side. And uh, maybe just a little bit deeper in the sense of space. Uh, let's talk about Brunelleschi's first in terms of maybe some of the the um, influences on Brunelleschi's. A lot of people see that Brunelleschi's is still a little bit more Gothic in nature, meaning that it came from the period before where uh, the there was more abstraction in the figures. They weren't necessarily so realistic. Um, definitely his is more realistic than this. This is uh, early um, uh, medieval art, but that it's still, his work still seems just a little bit um, I don't want to say awkward, but but or clumsy, but just a little bit uh, less realistic than we see over here. For hundreds of years, um, this was the type of art that was done because they didn't really believe in realism. They were afraid that people would worship false idols, so they made sure that things didn't look particularly real. Uh, some a lot of people say that they can still see somewhat of that influence here, even though we do see some more realistic features to this. It doesn't quite seem maybe as realistic as Ghiberti's. So Ghiberti le, le, looks back instead of to the mid medieval or the period that was just before. He looks over to ancient Greece and he says, you know, I liked the realism in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. And he brings that back. His figure of Abraham seems much more realistic. The facial features seem realistic. The motion and the movement of the arms, the way there's that look and the body of Isaac. And obviously that body of Isaac is not a 12 year old boy, right? He's taken great liberties to make it more beautiful and, um, you know, more mature and developed. And so they said, you know, there's just two totally different approaches to this. And I just brought this in so you could see a close up and see how um, far that high, high that, that relief is and how far these figures are pulled off of here. And the look between the two, that, you know, psychic line that happens right between them. And here you get a sense like Abraham in, in Brunelleschi's is almost a madman, right? He, he's almost like crazed like his eyes are like he's just obsessed with this and that he's going to do this uh so very very different approaches well i'm gonna blow it here and i'm gonna tell you who won and that was ghiberti won this competition i don't think it was a right or wrong choice i just think it was the choice and it kind of set some motion. Now, I want to, I want you to look at these two sets of doors. This is the one that was done earlier by Pisano in 1330. And this is the one that was done by Bruno uh, Ghiberti, excuse me, in 1401, right? So 70 years between these two doors. Now, when you just glance at them, you go, well, I don't see any difference. They look about the same, right? 
but they aren't. And when Ghiberti set to work on his set of doors, this one, right, you can look and see if you look closer, there's a lot more to them. And let me show you. This is Pisano's earlier version of uh, the baptism of Christ. And if you look over here, this is Ghiberti's version of the baptism of Christ. Very different, right? It's much more uh, uh, spatially deep and much more realistic than the one over here. So Ghiberti sets to work on this new set of doors. I believe there's 28 panels in the second set of doors. And he was 21 when he started it, and it took him 21 years to complete it. It was uh, by the time when he was done, he had used 34,000 pounds of bronze to do it. And it cost the city of Flor, uh, city of Flores, or probably the wool merchants, I think they were the ones that were paying for it, 22,000 ducats. Now, I did a little bit of investigation, and 22,000 ducats, let me come over here, would have cost, uh, in today's money, $3.2 million is what they spent on this first set, set of doors that Ghiberti completed. They loved it so much, they said, hey, why don't you just do the other set, that one last set of doors that was still hanging out. So Ghiberte went to town. He worked on the new set of doors for 27 years and came up with this set, which is today known as the Gates of Paradise. Um, you can see, obviously, completely different. He's dumped the quatrefoil, right? No longer are they using that. He's just doing fewer large panels instead of all these small panels. This is uh, scenes from the um, Old Testament. So it seems like, you know, from the life of Moses, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah, you know, scenes, scenes like that that are in here. But perspective has happened, linear perspective. So he's come along and he's using linear perspective. And I wanted you to look just a little bit closer so you can see some of the depth in these, right? If you look, you, sometimes you got to kind of get over to the side just a little bit. Uh, this is the scale. I, I like having a person in here because these are 17 and a half feet tall. So you can get a sense of how uh, very, very tall these doors are. And I wanted you to look at just one door, one in particular. Today, they have removed all the panels and uh, taken them inside so that um, they are taken care of and they replace them with copies uh, that are outside today. So today you have to go into the museum of the cathedral to, to actually see these. And the one I wanted to talk about, my particular favorite, is the creation of, uh, well, it's the Adam and Eve story. And this is before restoration, okay? That's what it looked like when they brought it in and that's what I'm talking about. They decided we've got to do something about this. These can't be outside anymore. Pollution and things like that were just wreaking havoc on the door. So they brought them in, cleaned it up, and boom. Oh, my gosh. Look again. There to there. Okay. And this is this, the Adam and Eve story. So we start in this corner with Adam and the creation of Adam. So this is God giving life to Adam. See, he's helped touching him, helping him up, giving him life. And then, of course, we need Eve. So over here, right, is the creation of Eve's story. And so here's Adam laying down here, Eve coming out of the side of Adam, right? Angels pulling her up and God giving her life as well, just like he did over here. And surrounded by this heavenly host. And then over here, you have the temptation story where Eve, the apple, the serpent, Adam over here. And then, of course, all hell breaks loose. Uh, God is saying, uh, well, first sin, got to get out, right? No longer is it going to be lovely like this. Get out. And so he creates this portal or door to throw Adam and Eve out. Eve looks up in despair, and all of a sudden she realizes, oh my gosh, sin, right? So she tries to modestly cover herself up. Angel kicking her out the door. There you have it, right? So this is a continuous narrative, lots of stuff going on in one panel to tell the whole story. I wanted to just show you a few close ups so you can see how crazy beautiful this is. And, of course, this is the creation and the temptation back here. You can see the little head on the serpent, right? And 
this way, I, I like to show it from the side so you can see the depth, right? So that like the leg literally comes up off of uh, the picture plane. The Eve story in the center. I love this one. Here you can see Adam. He doesn't know what's happening. Eve and her beautiful figure moving up here, right? And her this beautiful look, like she's a little just kind of still a little despondent but in God's just giving her life right now and I love this side view so that you can see her hair you can see um, God reaching up to touch her to give her life and then down here over here I want to go to the expulsion so you can see uh, Eve's face looking up in horror at, at what's happening with them being expelled from the garden uh, this is uh, kind of just from one of the other panels, uh, just showing the conservation project that was happening, how they were cleaning here, and then what it looked like when they brought it in. Absolutely amazing. And this and Donatello along the edge uh, put his own portrait in there. So you can see, you know, by the time he was done, what he's like for uh, 70 years old or something, he really literally got the commission and spent his entire life working these two main projects. And um, at some one point in the Gates project, it became, uh, it was taking so long that the city actually uh, passed an ordinance that said Donatello cannot, or excuse me, Gerberti, he was, Donatello uh, was an apprentice of Gaverti. Gaverti could not take any more commissions until he finished the door. I mean, they literally said that. Uh, yeah, what happened to Bruno Leschi in the competition when he lost? Well, lucky for us, he lost because he went on to Rome and he uh, studied architecture and he was so mad. He was absolutely furious that he lost that competition to that idiot uh, Gaverti that he went to Rome, studied architecture, came back and said, I got an idea about that dome. And he spent, uh, you know, 25 years creating the dome uh, that sits on the cathedral. And that's a whole nother story that we'll talk about there. But he, he went on to, to massively change architecture. He never did any sculpture the rest of his life. He's so mad he just quit it. All right, so here's what I want you guys to do. Uh, I, will, I want you to think about these two, and I want you to tell me if you had been sitting on the jury that chose these two, which ones would you have chosen? And they picked Ghibertis, but you don't have to pick it. Which one do you think really represented the story better? Which one do you like better? And I just want you to look at them and think about that. And then I want you to answer the question and tell me why. I want you to tell me what, uh, why it represents the story better. I want you to tell me how it represents the story better. Um, so, okay, that gives you a good background on this. And I think you can now uh, go do that assignment. Have a great day, guys.